right, so the title of the class is Choose Wisdom Over Thyself. Choose Wisdom Over Thyself. All right, you, you choose God's ways over your own ways. All right, because that's, that's most of the problem in Israel. Uh, even coming in brand new into this, and even now, you've been, you could have been two years in, three years, keeping God's laws, but you still struggle with over choosing God's way, keeping his wisdom. Because God's way is wisdom. I want you to understand that. God's way is wisdom. When you, when you choose God's laws above your own mind, your own way, you are choosing wisdom. All right? Um, before I want pull up the definition of wisdom. The definition of wisdom. Read that for me. Wisdom, the quality or state of being wise, knowledge of what is true or right, coupled with judge with just judgment as to action, sagacity, discernment, or insight. An insight, discernment insight it says uh true or right coupled coupled with just judgment just judgment making the right judgment calls all right and that's what we lack and that's why we are here now to learn how to make better judgment calls or learning how to use wisdom all right because a lot of brothers in israel and sisters are not clinging on to wisdom they are not choosing wisdom over themselves and that's that's being selfish and is going to lead you to the to the footsteps of death all right uh for, give me second timothy chapter 3 verse 16. i'm going to open up with second timothy 3 and 16. Three, six, all five. scripture okay. is given by inspiration of god there we go there we go and is reproved for doctrine read it again all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given in, by inspiration of God. Come on. And profitable. And profi profitable. Uh, excuse for, me. Profitable. Profitable for uh -huh. doctrine. For reproof. Uh -huh. For correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. Read. That the man of God may be perfect. Excuse me. May be perfect thoroughly Finish, furnish, furnish unto all good works. And this is what we need to do. We need to make sure we take hold of this. God, it says God's word, all scripture is profitable. It's beneficial to you. It's beneficial for what? It says for uh, doctrine, for reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. So if you call yourself a believer of God and you're not leaning on God's commandments, you're not leaning on to his counsels, you're not seeking the counsels of the wise, then you chose yourself above wisdom. You chose yourself above wisdom if you're not doing that. If you're not going ahead, seeking out the dark sayings of, of those of old, you're not coming up calling your brothers and sisters all right, in time of need, you chose yourself above wisdom. All right? Give me Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. I got y'all. Oh, thank you. 14 verse 12 Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death read it again Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death. You see that? Who can explain that? Who understands that? I need a brother to help me out. Go ahead, the Naeem. I ain't hear from you in a while, man. Um, basically it's saying that even on your own understanding, that leads you to death, like your own shit. Give him the mic, give him the mic so he can speak to the mic. Basically saying, basically I think saying not to lean on your own understanding because it's gonna lead, your understanding is gonna lead you to death. Right. Instead of the, Correct. Everybody heard what he said? So it says, read it one more time from the top. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Uh -huh. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. Stop. It says, it's, there's a way that you're thinking, you're imagining your own mind that is right. Damn. If I sell this quarter key, it's a right thing. And use the money to feed my, that's right. 
if I go ahead and eat this um, pork, uh, pork sandwich while I'm hungry, it's right. It's a way that seems right. It, it looks right in your mind. When you leave a child to his own self, what happens to that child? No instruction, no guidance, no guidelines. And you leave him in the house. What, what do you think is going to happen? What estate are you going to find that house? Upside down. And probably the child will be halfway dead. Likewise, that's why God instructed us. He gave us scriptures, laws, guidelines for that thing, to, for self-destruction not to happen. Read on. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So it's guaranteed. If you go off your own vain opinion, your own vain thoughts, your, your own counselor, guess what? It says the end thereof, the result of is death. You want to do your own thing, YOLO? Guess what? Death. Death is waiting for you. And hopefully it's not too late. Hopefully it's not too late with the words of God. Wake up your spirit and help you make better judgment call. Choosing wisdom over yourself. All right? From there, give me a Sirach 1 and 1. Let's understand what is wisdom. Sirach 1 and 1. Sirach, chapter 1, verse 1. All wisdom coming from the Lord and is with him forever. For how long? Forever. It says all wisdom cometh from where? From the Lord. From the Lord. So if you want wisdom, you want to be able to make better judgment calls in life, it says it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Read. And it's with him forever. For how long? Forever. So you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Read. Verse 2. Who can number the sins of the sea, and the drops of rain, and the days of eternity? Who can find out the height of heaven? and the breadth of the earth, and the deep, and wisdom. Wisdom has been created before all things, and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. I want somebody to pull, pull up um, uh, the word understanding. Understanding, or to understand. Uh, the definition of understanding. To perceive the meaning of, grasp the idea of, uh -huh. to comprehend. Comprehend, comprehend. Hold on, scroll down and look at some synonyms. Okay, read that. Verse 1. It's going to be number 1. All right, so this is under one of the synonyms to uh, note. is uh, to perceive or understand as fact or true. Uh-huh. To apprehend clearly and with certainty. With certainty. To be clear. Certainty. And that's what the wisdom is supposed to do. Wisdom is supposed to make sure when you understand this is, this is going to benefit you. If you do God's commandments, you keep it, you apply it in your walk, you are guaranteed to be successful. You are guaranteed to live. And if you fully comprehend or understand that it's beneficial to you, or what Peter, or what, uh, Timothy said, profitable for you, then you use it, you're going to go a long way. You will go a long way. But it takes an individual to humble his spirit, humble her spirit, and take hold of wisdom, not their way. We just read earlier, there's a way that seems right unto you. you, you most of the time we think we, get, we, we got it all figured out. We mapped it out in our minds, we got the blueprint. You know what, if I go ahead and do this, this is gonna be the outcome, all right? And if this happened, just in case that happened, I'll just have a couple of stacks of money saved up, all right? Thinking that's gonna work out. But you don't, not knowing that someone is seeing all, all those plans, all those wicked imagination, someone is watching you and hearing it. They know all your plans. Because you think you're by yourself in that room. You think you're by yourself in that bathroom. And you think your way is better than God's way. That's the biggest mistake Israel makes every day. When it comes to decision making, when it comes to uh, making sure you make a proper judgment calls, you think your way is the, is the best way. And it says at the end thereof, there's death. And death might not come right away. You might not be met. Most I don't have mercy on you. He's, in the scriptures it says what? Once, twice. He'll warn you. Yep. He'll warn you. All right, if you're lucky enough, he'll warn you. If you have enough mercy, he'll warn you. All right. 
I got time. Well, hey, give me a Proverbs 21 and 2. Guess what? Gotcha. Like we were saying before, our minds will think that what? What we're doing is right. As far as we not amongst each other always, right? So when we out in the world, we might be with our co-workers, or we might even go visit our family members. Things that we might do with them or say to them, we might think it's right. But guess what? It's wrong. There's certain things you gotta watch what you say. Because in your heart, in your mind, you think it's right. But the most high tells you that what? Everything that you do, say, or think, it's not always right. Read. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Because mm. what? You think going to your family's house on 4th of July is good. Right. You right. know what? Hey, there's no, damn, there's no hard feeling. We ain't doing nothing. Yeah. We're just gonna go see my family. We're just gonna visit them. I haven't seen them for so long. I got that day off. Right. I should just go see them. Guess what? Why would you go on that day? There's other days that you could choose. Sunday, until the fun is over though. Some days you could go see your family. But it's still, even when amongst them, you still gotta watch what you say. Certain things is not gonna go right. But then you're gonna stop saying, oh, dang, I should have not said that. Because what? That's evil, whatever you're speaking. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. Yeah. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Yeah. But the Lord pondereth the heart. The law is gonna ponder if your heart is what? Whatever comes out your mouth, whatever you say or whatever you do, the spirit is gonna come out and say, oh, wow, I know that was wrong. That's the most I pounded upon you. Or like the officer said before, you might get what? Deaf. You might get hurt, you might get deaf. Yeah. That's another way. There's different ways of the massage pounding in front of you. Different ways. You could get walk outside, get hit by a car, or you can eat something, drink something, or you could just stand there and guess what? Bullets just come through the door. And guess what? It's right towards you. Any little thing is possible. Believe it. It's the most high. It's the most high doing it. Most high kills and he wounds. Most I want, anything that you think is right, he'll prove you wrong, believe it or not. He'll prove you wrong. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that, I wanted to go back to that uh, Sarat 1, but I wanted to continue to verse 5, because uh -huh. uh, that, to me, that just, that, that kind of scream out a lot. Because a lot of our people think that the things that they know, or the things that they understand, I guess, they have in mind right now, whether it's in the Bible or not, they believe that what they know is, is the top knowledge, which is why they apply most of the time in their life. That's why our brothers would leave Brotherhood, like as in, oh, this is my brother, my brother telling me what's good to actually go into gang banging, which they consider to be a brotherhood, yep. but it's entirely different. Right. Same thing with the sisters. All of the understanding, all of the wisdom that we have, you can gain all of that. Even the world knowledge that you have, or what you thought you learned from school and college, you can read about it in the Bible. Psychology, in the Bible. Science, in the Bible. Mathematics, in the Bible. Uh, anything in theology, you can read about it, even the lies about it, in the Bible. Read uh, Sirach, uh 1 and 5. Sirach. Oh, yeah, yeah. The book of Sirach, chapter 1, verse 5. The word of God, most high, is the fountain of wisdom. Meaning everything in this world, every level, step, foundation of knowledge that is in this world, that exists, comes from the Bible. Read. And her ways are everlasting commandments. Meaning, no matter what you, no matter how you want to look at it, which way you want to pinpoint it out, what words you want to take out and add in, it all came from the Bible. Even the fact that you want to take your own opinions and live, live by that, that's in this Bible. And learning how to solve it and stop it and do what God says, in the Bible. The problem, the solution, the cause, the effect, the good, the evil, in the Bible. It is the wisdom of fountain. I mean, it's the fountain of wisdom. Right. So, just to show you that, um, well, we said God wants you once, once or twice, all right? And we, let's get that. Job chapter 33, start at verse 14. Because the most high ain't nothing to play with. Either you're going to serve him fully, all right? Be a servant to the most high God, or you're going to be a servant to sin. When you say you serve yourself, your lust, you're a servant, you're a servant or a slave to sin. And guess what's the payment of sin? Death. Death. They go hand in hand. But if you choose to mortify your members, mortify your thoughts, and subdue it, and give it to the Most High God, guess what? What's the payment for that? What's the reward? Amen. The kingdom. Health. All right? Prosperity and success. 
reading. Job chapter 33, verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumbering upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. He does what? Sealeth their instruction. He seals your instruction. So when you wake up in the morning and you're thinking that's your thoughts, I'm going to go here today, I'm going to go here today, I'm going to go there today. You think it's you. But it's the Most High who's orchestrating everything. He's the one whispering in your ear, listen, you're going to go see uh, so-and-so today. If you was that wicked, uh, if you was that wicked uh, servant, guess what's going to happen? And you're going to go to visit one of your old traps or your old stomping grounds. Wait, he's going to pop, he's going to... Just gonna show up. Just show your face. So you mean to tell me that even the thoughts that you think you have when you wake up, right. that's not your own thoughts? Even those thoughts that you think is yours, right. it's not your own. Hey, all of a sudden there's a scripture on it. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> get it there. We're not trying to get we're trying to keep doing. This is very easy to be understood. Either you're gonna serve wisdom, which is the spirit of Christ, or you're gonna serve sin yourself. That's all right? It. Read. Then he opened up the ears of men and sealed their instruction. So he sealed your instruction. If you said, listen, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to YOLO. Whatever your sin was, he's going to seal that instruction. And guess what's waiting for you on the end? Death. Drive-by shooting. All right, you could get into a fight. Get really hurt. Because you decided, let me go visit so-and-so. Knowing damn well so-and-so has nothing to do with God's laws. Has nothing to do have nothing profitable to give to you, but you decided to do your own thing. You wanted to hit itch and scratch that itch, something that you used to dabble in. But what's waiting for you on the other end is not too pretty. Read. Verse 17, that he may withdraw man from his purpose. You might, you're gonna withdraw yourself from your purpose. Your true purpose is what, man? Who, to keep his commandments and serve him. That's your true purpose. Read. And hide pride from men. Come on. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. You see that? So when you decide, listen, I'm going to go all in with keeping God's commandments. It's not about me. It's about my nation, God's commandments, the glory that's soon to come. He says he, he's going to do what? Read that last part. And he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He keepeth your soul from the pit. Death. He'll preserve you. Hold up. No, not my prophet. You know what? There's uh, something set up for somebody else. I don't want you driving down this way today. You're going to take an a alternate route. Next thing you know while you're at work or you're driving, you hear the news. Hey, uh, roadblock. Three people dead, car flipped, upside down. That was the same route you must have took. You usually take that route, but for some reason, you got different instructions to go the other way. Because God said, I'm gonna keep this one, this servant right here, I'm gonna reserve him. I'm gonna reserve her, keep her from death. No, not this servant, this one mine. They decided to serve me, so I'm gonna protect them. That's it on that? Yes, sir. All right, go back to the Sirach one. No, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 9. Choosing wisdom over thyself. All right, not your way, but choose wisdom. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. This is another thing right here. This is your choosing yourself. The heart, you're choosing your heart. Well, I'm a good person. Well, God said, your heart is desperate. Read on, read on. Finish up the whole scripture. The heart is deceitful above all things. Deceitful. Come on. And desperately wicked. Mm. Desperately wicked. Mm. Well, you know what that means? Desperately wicked? That means your mind's constantly thirsting for wickedness. <laughs> it's constantly trying to come up with creative ways to break God's commandments. That's why when you sit alone to your, to your own self, these crazy thoughts will pop up in your head, and then you find yourself right there in the footstep of death. Not knowing what's waiting for you. Because you say, you know what, man, that sounds like a good idea. Didn't seek counsel. You, you said, you know what, this is a good plan. 
You came up with that whole idea in your mind. And what's waiting for you? Death. It said, like, with, with it being desperately wicked, that means every thought outside of the scripture right. is going to be wicked. Meaning, if your thought, if you can't find a thought process or the actions or the things you're about to do, if you can't find a scripture on why you do it or why you should do it, then the majority of the time it's going to be wicked. Right. The way you're going to do it is going to be wicked. It's going to be sinful. That's what, that's, what, that's what it ends up turning out to be. Brothers, what is the heart? I need a brother. Raise your hands. What is the heart? See, I'm getting a new gun. You, you know it. Put your hand down. You already know. <laughs> Let me see. Let me get a new brother. Who knows what the heart is according to the scriptures? Way in the back. Yeah, you. Stand up. Let me hear you. What, what's your name? My name is Carmelo. Carmelo. What is the heart, Carmelo? The heart is the mind. What scripture do you know? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Make sure you have your papers. Your notebooks, get ready to take notes. All right, we're not in here just to stare at each other, but we're here to, to learn. That's why we call this the school, a place of learning. Learning your heritage and how to please the Most High God. I'll read that. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within. See that, that's where they store that. They're all there in the mind. They're all there in your heart. On default mode, void of understanding and structures of God. That's, that's autopilot. There, there you go. Your mind on autopilot. We just spoke to a brother today at camp and uh, we asked the brother, what, what's, what's your skill? What do, what do you do? Oh man. What, what was his answer? We out here. We out here. Y'all know what that means. Y'all yeah, know what that means. If y'all don't know what that means, I asked the brother, what is your skill, brother? What do, what do you master? He said, we out here. And asked the other brother. He said, yeah, I'm out here too. <laughs> if you don't know what out here means, it means he's a drug dealer. He's a drug dealer. He doesn't want to say it plainly, but yeah, he's out here. Meaning he's out there to serve you with drugs. All right, serving death. Yeah, and when we tried to show the brother his nationality, he went running. He got that phone call. The video's gonna come out. He got the phone call. Oh, gotta go. Time to go. Damn, All right, so that's as that's soon as he caught it too. Right. As soon as he caught on, as soon as phone call came. The spirit of the Lord started pouring out. Got the phone call. Satan came in. Yeah, I got that for you. Time to go. All right. Satan read. himself calls. Exactly. All right, read on. Read it again. Verse 23, uh -huh. all these evil things come from within. All those things are already in your mind. And it's your job, once you get enlightened by this word, that you need to implement them. Implement God's commandments. That's the only way you can fight against these thoughts. That's right. Fight against these attributes that's already in your mind. All right? That's how you cling on to the wisdom. That's how you choose wisdom over yourself. From there, give me uh, Proverbs 28 and 26. Proverbs 28 and 26. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Is a what? Is a fool. You hear what the scripture says? He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. When you think your, your way is the best way, you are a fool. God says, Let's, wait a minute, did they come to seek counsel? When did they come up and uh, went over scriptures? Did they see, did they call anybody? Malachi 3.16, did they call anybody? You know what, it's not gonna work. Whatever they got planned out, it's not gonna work. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. He that trusted in his own heart is a fool. Read. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He shall be what? Delivered. He that walketh wisely. He that choose wisdom, God's way, over his own thinking, his own way. Seek counsel. That's why every Sabbath you'll hear the leadership, you know, encourage you, brothers and sisters, seek out counsel. You're not too sure about anything, call somebody up. We post the numbers up of the leadership. All right, you got soldiers, uh, officers' numbers posted. So we make ourselves available. So there's no excuse. No excuse. 
All right, I'm, it's uh, Monday. I have sisters, brothers calling me all the time. I'm not too sure about this. That's a wise person. I don't know. What do I do? And it's our job, our duty to go into the scriptures to show you. We can't just let our brothers and sisters walk around ignorant. That's what a real leader does. That's what a nation of kings and priests are supposed to do. All right? I was, yes, was going to say something also, right quick. I was going to say something. But a lot of brothers don't realize that moment in time where it comes to that uh, the opportunity to trust in yourself or trust in the Lord. That moment in time comes when something's about to happen in your life and you are not sure what you should do. For instance, and that's the majority all the times, because we weren't taught exactly how to pay the bills, right? We weren't taught how to raise our I families. We weren't taught how to be men, how to love our wives, to treat our children. We weren't taught these things. So when those times come up, you have the question, should I do this or should I do that? That moment you need to get counsel. Because of the fact that you can either choose to go on your own opinion, which would be like, you know, I've seen something on TV, right. so maybe I should do this with my child. Or you can get counsel and then we find the scriptures and you go by wisdom. That is the moment and opportunity where you need to seek wisdom, where you need to find out what to do. Why should I do it this way? That's when you need to seek the wisdom. That's right. Can okay. you get Proverbs 11 and 14 real quick? Uh, I don't know if anybody heard about this in the news a few um, months back or whatever the case is. It was a, a mother who decided to put a child on a vegan diet. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the child eventually what? died. What? Right? So the, the mother was then... Uh, put into prison. Yeah. But that's well, exactly yeah. that's exactly what the officer just explained. Now when you think or you use your own understanding and you go with what you maybe saw on YouTube. What you maybe saw on a self help article, book. Right. Bar Barnes and Nobles, right? We read it all the time that you should never trust your enemy. And that's exactly who puts out a lot of this stuff. But the counsel that you understand that you're going to get that's going to help you to live and to grow and multiply and grow in the spirit, you're going to get from the Bible. That's the instruction manual in all life. You've heard an acronym, basic instructions before leaving earth. That's exactly what the Bible is. Exactly. It's basic instructions on how to live and how to retain life. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Uh-huh. Where no counsel is, uh -huh. the people fail, fall. The evidence of that is what you see outside of these doors. The evidence of that is every Memorial Day, every 4th of July, where you hear the people getting shot down in the street. I think it was in Myrtle Beach where a dude just started shooting. Just started shooting. Shot a cop, shot a sister in the head. Just started bugging out shooting. But read that again. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. So you mean to tell me that all these Christian churches in all of these cities throughout America and the world, and there's no counsel to stop this stuff happening in our neighborhoods, among our people? All of these mega churches where pastors are asking for millions of dollars from their parishioners. And you mean to tell me there's no counsel to stop them from having single mothers, single mother homes, dysfunctional families, murdering and killing each other, selling drugs to one another? It's evidence that this Bible is real. Where, no, where no counsel is, the people will fall. And our people are in a low estate, in a decayed state, a dead state. Read on. But in the multitude... But... Read in the multitude of counselors. So when you see your officers, the elders, the deacons, the captains, the soldiers, the brothers who are studied in this word and, and keep these commandments, when you're looking for somebody to give you some counsel, look to somebody that's keeping God's commandments. The Bible says that those, those who do his commandments have a good understanding. We just read that uh, the meaning of understanding is basically to know. So those who do God's commandments, they know. They know how to live. And they know how to avoid death. So to avoid death, don't trust in your own understanding. Because that will get you killed. That's all right. Guaranteed. Oh, that's right. All praises. So we're going to go over some solutions now. All right? Some solutions to build you up, to instruct you, hopefully you'll cling on and make better judgment calls in your life.
All right, so let's go with some solutions. You want to bring one out? Yeah, let me bring one out. Give me uh, Psalms, uh, let's see, Psalms 119 verse 115. So we're going to go with solution as far as how to choose wisdom over yourself. Because believe it or not, like we broke out, there's many ways that our, our mind wants to choose whatever we want instead of choosing what God tells us. So there's different ways as far as if we're around people uh, or when we buy ourselves. You got that, Jose? Read that. Psalms chapter 119, verse 115. Depart from me, ye evildoers. Ye evildoers. There's many ways. It could be what? Your mind is an evildoer or the people that you're around are evildoers. The most side is telling you, depart. You have to tell them, listen, you ain't, ain't got to literally speak it sometime. You can say in your mind, you know what? I got to leave. I'll give you an example. This is recently. This is what? Uh, two days ago, I was working in Jacksonville. I had an Edomite that I was working with, right? He said, hey, we finished work. Let's go get something to eat. So I said, I'm typing on my phone. So I told him no. But then I didn't know I told him. So I said, oh, no, no. Yeah, I'll go get, I'll go get lunch with you. No problem. But I'm already done with work. I can just go back to the hotel. So that's all I think. I said, do I really, really want to have lunch with him? I'm thinking about my brothers and everything. I'm like, I don't want to have lunch with you. And I got brothers in Jacksonville. I could call up and say, hey, you want some lunch? I'll buy it. So I sat there. I said, dang. I'm going to call him up and tell him no. Call him up. I say, hey, bro. I ain't tell him, bro. You know, he's Esau. I tell him, I said, listen, I got something to do. I got paperwork. I'll see you next time. Hang up. Call brothers. Hey, what you doing? Hey, I'm over here. I said, all right, I'm going to go see you. When to go see the brother, I ain't going to go spend my time to go and see Esau, an evildoer. Believe it or not, no matter what he does, he's an evildoer. Yeah. I'd rather go and spend time with someone who keeps God's law. That's right. But let's read it again. Psalms chapter 119, verse 115. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, ye evildoers. Yeah. For I will keep the commandments of my God. That's what we got to tell ourselves. What? We got to keep God's laws. I'm not going to go about what anyone tells me. I'm not going to go about what my mind tells me. I'm going to go about what you tell me, Lord. I'm going to keep your commandments. Guess what? The commandments give us what? Life. That's what gives us life. So we got to depart from all the evil and keep God's laws. That's the solution. You hear that? Yeah. All right. From that same, same book. Psalms 119, start at verse oh, 127 and 128. Right. Psalms chapter 119. And when you get a chance, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, try to add this to your uh, reading. You're studying Psalms 119. There's a lot of information in there. Yes. A lot of information right there. So when you get a chance, try to meditate that. Add that to your repertoire. Go ahead. Psalms 119, verse 127. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. I love it above gold. Above any valuable thing. I value the commandments of God. Read. Yea, above fine gold. Above fine gold. Come on. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts. All God's laws. Come on. Concerning all things to be right. Uh-huh. And I hate every false way. And hate every false way. False way. Anything that opposes God. You hate him. Because you know what? You, you took up God's commandments, his statutes, his way. And you said, you know what? I choose this above any false way. Meaning your own way. It might have been, it might have been some, a thought that crossed your mind for you to do it in this in this way. You said, no, you know what? I'm going to do it God's way. From there, go to, I wanted Baruch. Baruch. You almost finished. Got New York coming on. We're going to take a break after that. And then uh, we're going to tune into New York. Uh, Baruch 3 and 9. Baruch 3 and 9. Baruch chapter 3 verse 9 Hear Israel The commandments of life Give ear to understand Wisdom Give ear to understand wisdom Read How happeneth it Israel That thou art in thine enemy's land So we still in our enemy's land We still here we're not in our land We have a nation A wicked nation who's tr trying down our land Right now to this day They still there to this very day Pretending to be you Pretending to be God's chosen, 
But were we still in our enemy's land? Read. That thou art waxen old in a strange country. Come on. That thou art defiled with the dead. That thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. How are we counted to them that goes down to the dead? How are we counted? Naive. Because Exactly. You're, you're a walking zombie. You are counted to them who's already uh, uh, reserved for death, for destruction. But you being chosen and, and God and gave us instruction which gives you life, by you forsaking that wisdom, forsaking that understanding, you already numbered yourself amongst those who are already preserved for death. When you choose your way above God's way, you just set yourself, you put a number on your forehead, hey, kill me today. Nuclear missile meat. Read. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Fountain of what? Of wisdom. Read. For if thou hadst walked in the way of God, thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever. You see what, what the Most High said to our forefathers? Because we was going through captivity after captivity. We would go into one captivity, he'll save us and deliver us. After we get this, the, uh, delivered, we in our land. Next thing you know, we sin again. We mess up. We choose our way. And then he sent us right back into slavery again. He said if we was to just keep his laws, if they were to keep his commandments and hold on, hold fast to it, he said we would have, read that last part again. Thou, sh God, thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever. Forever. I don't know about you, but that sounds mighty good to me. Not waking up to a nine to five, all right? Yes. Having an Esau look down your back, put his foot on your back, yes. telling you, listen, I need you to hear. No, you know what? I know your schedule says this, but I need you on this day. I don't know about you. I don't want that. I want peace of mind. I want that rulership again. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure we get that, that same position again. And I encourage you brothers to do the same thing. It's, for, it's, it's profitable to you. Read on. Learn where is wisdom. Learn where is wisdom. Learn, how do you learn where is wisdom? You're a married brother, all right, and you want to know how to properly instruct your house, you want peace in your house, you need to make sure you go around other like my brothers who, who know how to do that. You have leadership who's married, you have brothers who are, are, are governing their house appropriately, you need to make sure you ask questions. That's how you do that. Brothers, single brothers, you want to know how to make it day to day. You still battling in certain lusts. You want to know how to mortify it to be perfect in the eyes of God? You got single brothers who's doing well. You need to talk to them, seek counsel, see what they're doing. Sisters, likewise, you want to prove a brother. You need to talk to the married sisters on how to serve the Lord, how to properly prove a brother. Seek counsel, sisters. Seek counsel, sisters. All right, that's very important. Marry sisters who's having trouble in how, how to properly serve their Lord. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to take the correction. You still catch yourself talking back. You got eight sisters. Be around them. Ask them questions. How they deal with that. There's right. different scenarios, so you need to give that talk to that. Tell your sister that. Tell the other eight sister who's been in the truth for X amount of uh, years. Talk to them. See how they deal with it. You're not the only one. The Bible says he'll never put you in a situation you can't handle. Let's read that real quick. Let's read that. First Corinthians? Yeah, I got you. 10, 13. First Corinthians, chapter 10, and verse 13. Here, here we go. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. He will not allow you to suffer. There's a solution to every problem. There's a solution to every problem. There's nothing new. Just It's up to you now. The ball is in your court. What you going to do? The solution is here in this Bible. Wisdom is here waiting for you. With a stretched out arm. Waiting for you to just grab hold of it. But it's up to you to take hold. See, he you won't read it again. There have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Come on. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. Make a way for you to escape, to deal with it. Make it not grievous for you. You understand? 
All right, let me see. Back to Peru. You got some? Yeah, I got some. So, like the officer is saying, somewhere to escape, right? So the only way for you to escape is what you gotta be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. Because if you ain't disciplined, you ain't gonna escape. Give me a uh, Ciroc, uh, 32, uh, what's that? 32 and 14. Yeah, All right, that one. Ciroc, 32 and 14. Because you gotta be disciplined. Disciplined in the Most High. Read. Ciroc, chapter 32, verse 14. Whoso feared the Lord will receive his discipline. You have to fear God. The only way to fear God is what? Keep his commandments. If you keep his commandments and you understand it, you're going to have what? Discipline. That's what the Most High is going to give you. Whatever you read here, guess what? It's going to be discipline. Instruction of what to do. That's being disciplined. Read on. And they that seek him early shall find favor. If you seek God now, when you wake up, you're supposed to be what? Seeking God. That's the earliest. Every time you go to sleep, wake up, you got to seek God. And you find favor is what? He's showing you his word, how to get through it. He's showing you what to do, what not to do. That's the favor that he's giving you. Because believe it or not, not a lot of people of ours don't know what God's saying. Don't know that God is talking to, giving us a way out, an escape. But guess what? Our people don't know that. They don't know the way out. That's what we are here showing them. But now we're telling you what? Don't follow your way. Follow the wisdom of the Most High. The discipline. That's the only way you're going to escape. That's the only way out. Yeah, it was. All right. Real quick. Baruch uh, 3 and 14. And then I know those are. Jody, you want to say something? Yeah, Baruch. All right. Baruch chapter 3, verse 14. Learn where is wisdom. So learn. You have to you have to constantly learn. It's not just gonna come to you overnight. You're not gonna send up a special prayer and it's gonna you're gonna wake up with that with the wisdom. Alright, it's not it don't it don't work like that. I tried. I tried. First coming in, please, Lord. I want that same memory as Ezra's. Please, Father. Let me let me see visions. Like uh, uh, Ezra's. And no, it don't come like that. <laughs> they laugh because they tried it too. <laughs> it don't come like that. You have to apply. You got to study. You got to study to show yourself a pool. And, and you know what? That's how we know if you ain't studying. When you, hey, listen, I don't, I don't understand. We'll call on you with basic questions. And you don't raise your hand. You don't ask. We'll, we'll also know if you have a fearful spirit. Well, no. Oh, this brother's scared. If you're scared of man, imagine God's commandments. Come on. Brothers, if you don't know, you don't know, ask. All right? But you have to be learning. Read. Finish up. Where is strength? Read it from the top. Right. Baruch chapter 3, verse 14. Learn where is wisdom. Learn where it's at. Learn where wisdom is at. Most of you here because y'all starting to learn. Y'all know it's here. Y'all know it's in this Bible. All right? But it don't it don't stop here. When you go back home to your respectable places, you gotta keep it going. All right, wives, you gotta talk to your lords. If you don't know, ask them. That way, you pushing them to to go seek the answer. And that way, you also it helps. I'm telling you, when when wives go out and they uh, begin to interact with their uh, husbands, and they ask them questions, and they going out to find the answer, and they sit down and learn together, it's a beautiful thing. You want some marriage counsel? There you go right there. Do that. Ask, force these men to go work and seek out the Lord. Watch how your marriage turn out. Go ahead, read on. Learn where is wisdom. Learn where is wisdom. Come on. Where is strength? Where is what? Strength. Where is strength? Come on. Where is understanding? That's where understanding is. Now, once you learn what is right, how to please God, you have the understanding. Understanding comes when you're applying it now, and it's working for you. Like, well, uh, you know what, I, I, I was going to do this, but let me go ahead and seek out counsel. Let me call. I was going to do pull the trick on this decision making. But you know what, hold on. Let me see what what the brothers got to say. That way right there, now it shows you understand. You understand wisdom. Because wisdom is just knowing what is right and wrong. The understand comes when you apply it and you use it. That's the understanding. From there. Song, no, go ahead, I was doing it. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. 
James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, read, let him ask of God. Read it one more time. If any of you, if any of you lack wisdom, like the officer said before, if there's a point in your mind where I'm not sure what I should do, read it again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Read. That given that given to all men liberally. That means freely. He'll give you the wisdom that you seek freely. Read on. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. It means he, he, he upbraideth not. That means he doesn't hold back. But he'll give you that wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and uh, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon. 14. Just go right to the point. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 14. So if any of you lack wisdom, ask of God and he'll give it to you freely. Read. Whoso seeketh her early. Whoso seeketh wisdom early. Right? Read. Shall have no great travail. So you're not gonna you're not gonna be under any kind of a uh, uh, major mental hardship, psychological hang-ups. Read on. For he shall find her sitting at his doors. That's exactly what you'll, you'll she'll be ready and waiting to give her give you all that you seek. That's how wisdom gets down. If you seek it, she's there, ready and willing to give you everything, all your your pleasures and your desires. But the only way you could get wisdom is if you. Go out of the manual, the instruction manual that God gave you. That's the only way you'll get it. It's if you ask of God. That's it. All right. Last, I'm like, last scripture. Last scripture. Sirach 21 and 11. Last scripture. And then we're going to, then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to go um, watch me up. They already on? Okay. Yeah, they already on. So. But we're still going to take a break, though. We're still take a break. Sirach 21, verse 11. He that keepeth the laws of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. You hear that? So it says, He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding. So when you get the laws of the Lord, you're keeping it, meaning you're applying it. All right, you heard it. You read it for yourself. You did the research. And you hear with us. And keeping the commandments, it says, now you get it to understand it. Now you know what it means uh, to wear fringes on all your garments. Now you know the importance of it as well. Read. Verse 12. No, uh, read 11 again. Oh, verse 11. Uh, Sirach chapter 21, verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord, getteth the understanding thereof. Uh-huh. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord. Now the perfection of the fear of the Lord, come on. Is wisdom. That's the wisdom. Keeping his commandments, executing on those commandments, that is the wisdom. Others may see your wisdom, they'll say, you know what? This person is wise. They know what they're talking about. You ever experienced that when you out there and you, you teach someone and they, they sit back and look at you like that? I never heard that before. Because now you have you, the spirit of Christ is coming out of you. The spirit of Christ is upon you and you apply his commandments and you know what you're talking about. You studied and you know how to uh, uh, explain God's commandments. You know how to explain your heritage to that brother or sister. Shalom, this is, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.